I'm going to open this with, I think, three facts that I'd like you um, to think about. And there are three facts that, in a sense, we all know already. They may not be new. But I often say to people that you don't really know them till you start to think about them. So the first one is if we could have the slide that shows um, results from a National Academy of Science panel, of which I was a member, that looks at life expectancy over the last 30 years in the United States, and along with a number of other OECD countries, all pretty well wealthy, industrialized countries. <coughs> and one of the things you notice is that we now rank at the bottom of OECD countries in terms of life expectancy. Um, this wasn't true 30 years ago. It wasn't true 50 years ago. We were never at the top, but we were in about the middle of those rankings. And over time, what's happened is that every other country, virtually every other country in this diagram, has improved substantially. And we've improved a tiny bit. So life expectancy in the United States has improved over time. But it's improved so much less than almost all other countries that we're now left behind. So this panel actually sought to understand why that happened. And that's something that will come back to you. But sort of fact number one is that we rank at the bottom of OECD countries in terms of life expectancy today. And this wasn't true 30, 40 years ago. And it's especially true for women whose life expectancy has virtually stagnated over this time. The second fact is that there's an enormous disparity in life expectancy within the United States. So while the best off, most educated, wealthiest Americans have continued to experience increases in life expectancy, those at the bottom have not only stagnated, but in some cases have actually lost years of life expectancy over time. So less educated women have lost life expectancy over time. Their mortality rates have increased over the period. This is virtually unknown in most Western industrialized countries. The places where we see these kinds of things happen have been with the AIDS epidemic in sub-Saharan Africa or in Russia as the um, former Soviet Republic became a set of independent countries and life expectancy plummeted in many cases. So this is something that we also have to come to grips with, that the widening equalities that we see in the United States are growing over time, not decreasing. The third fact that I want to talk about has to do with aging societies. That is, across the world, we are all becoming aging societies, demographically speaking. By 2020, there will be more people in the United States who are over 65 than there are under 15. This is the first time this has happened globally. And actually, it's going to happen in China about a decade earlier. And it's happened already in many European countries. It's the result of falling fertility rates. So as fertility declines, you have a smaller number of young people. And as we see increases in life expectancy. So the coupling of increases in life expectancy with decreases in fertility produce aging societies. And one of the things that is really important to think about is that this is not a problem. This is something that virtually every society has worked for over the last 50 years. We all want to live longer. Nobody is like volunteering to have a decrease in life expectancy to produce a less aging society. Most people think that drops in fertility are also very healthy and have allowed women to join the workforce, have produced healthier children, and overall healthier societies. But it does mean that we have to really rethink in a fundamental way what we think of and how we work and how our societies will structure opportunities for people.